We talked about uh, an abstract description of gate model quantum computers. We talked about quantum annealers, but we never talked about how you actually build one of these things. So let's take a look at the, the couple of competing approaches today, which, which could scale up to larger quantum computers. Well, the most popular approach is superconducting architectures. So in this case, you are using a silicon-based technology. This is great because you can use the same fabrication facilities as you would use for building your, your digital circuits on your phone or in your laptop. The only difference is that you cool it down to around 10 millikelvin with a massive refrigerator. And then you use microwave pauses to induce control and actually implement the gates and the interaction between the different qubits. And microwave pauses are great because control speed is very fast. You are in the range of nanoseconds. So in principle, uh, the, the speed of this system is, is very, very good, but there are a couple of problems. First of all, since, since you have this silicon wafer, this is fundamentally two-dimensional. So imagine now that you have four qubits implemented, then you can have full connectivity between every pair of qubits. So you can apply gates between any pair of qubits. But the moment you add the fifth one, that goes away, because there's no way to connect this fifth one with all of the other ones. You cannot cross the wires. So when it comes to a problem like this, this is where the quantum compiler starts to play an important role. Because what it would do if you want to interact these two qubits, it would, it would implement something called a swap. For instance, it would swap these two, perform the interaction, and then swap them back. That's the easiest thing to do. And the swap is, is very simple. So if you look at the, the circuit diagram of it, this is just a controlled knot followed by a controlled knot the other way, and then a third one. So it introduces three gates to, to swap it here, and then you perform the, the gate that you wanted, and you could swap it back. So you would have look at seven gates just to perform one gate operation. This will be a problem. So the problem is short coherence time. So in these systems, you, you look at very, very short coherence times, which means that you can only execute gate sequences, which are very short. So your circuit depth is basically the, the number of gates that you have lined up on your circuit. And this depth is very limited. And how limited it is? Well, we are looking at 10 to 20 gates. And now you're using up three gates just to swap these two. So that's, that's a fundamental limitation in this architecture, and you have, have to be very careful when you design algorithms and compilers because you want to avoid introducing extra gates in your compilation. Plus, these systems have uh, cooling requirements. One of these refrigerators costs half a million dollars on its own, so that's a major engineering bottleneck. Then we have trapped ions. In this case, we take individual ions, which are just charged atomic particles, we line them up. And, and we trap them in an electromagnetic field, and we use laser pulses to control their interaction. These are fantastic. Um, they have a long coherence time, but they have their own disadvantages. Uh, scalability is unclear. So recently, uh, there are systems up, up to above 70 qubits implementing this system, but it's unclear how well it will scale to larger and larger systems, because we ideally want thousands of qubits. And the speed of control is much slower than in the case of superconducting architectures. Then we have photonic systems, for instance, which is just light. You can take, for instance, the polarization of the light as, as qubit states. So it would be left polarized, right polarized, and the superposition in between. And they operate at room temperature, so that's fantastic. But the problem is that these, these photonic circuits have photon loss. You can characterize it, but this loss is going to be there. And then photons cannot be stored, unlike these ions, which are suspended, or the silicon-based architectures, where, where the actual artificial atom or, or the flux qubit is actually carved on the silicon wafer. These are, these are elusive in nature. So it's unclear which one of these architectures is going to give us a large-scale perfect quantum computer. 
And there are also a couple of other approaches to try building one. So at this point, we just have to wait and see which one proves best.